Hello fellow old schoolers. Now I had anticipated that we were actually uh, at the semi-finals uh, of this tournament, but people have been absolute bosses and have recorded some extra matches from the top 8 and uh, even kept them a whole year here and sent them to me. So we're in for a treat here. We have another quarterfinal match. This time it is between uh, Jacob on robots and a fan favorite, namely Espen on his troll box deck. And we'll uh, take a moment, uh, a few moments to go over the decks here. Now this is Jacob Dellerup's uh, robot deck. And uh, Jacob, he has really specialized in the robot arts type. He's been tweaking this brew and have ma many variants of it. Uh, this version, it does resemble Skynet quite a bit, but it, uh, as we see here, it is a bit more controlish, uh, foregoing the Armageddon's and instead having uh, way more counter spells and um, yeah, uh, four counter spells and a mana drain. And then we have uh, the creature base, four sushis and three Triskillians. And like Skynet, it has a main deck city in a bottle as an extra out against Library of Alexandria, and also because he doesn't use many uh, Arabian Night cards himself. Um, he has opted in for a recall instead. Again, much more of the control route here, um, a way to sort of like reuse all the restricted cards from the graveyard, but it is, I mean, a slower card, and um, yeah, the, the playstyle of this variant of, of robots is, is way less aggressive than what we usually see, and uh, we'll try to gain control with the counter magic and the recall, and then at some point uh, deploy the Sushi and Triskillians and copy them with three copy artifacts. We also have a couple of icy manipulators to gain control, like Skynet has, and uh, yeah, just try to win in the mid game. We do see two Abyss main deck here and four soft to plowshares, so a bunch of removal along with those ICs, really uh, giving him a good matchup against mid range and uh, aggro as well. And uh, Strengthened even more by two deserts we saw at, in the sideboard there. A pretty cheeky tech. Um, you can tap that to do a point of damage to an attacking creature, so it really works well against quick white and uh, lions and golden pixies and stuff like that, just pinging them away. Uh, so, yeah, really geared against the aggro actually. Uh, other stuff in the uh, sideboard is another seed in the bottle, another Armageddon. A full playset of divine offerings with blue blast. The sages of Vladnam are pretty cheeky and very good against the deck and also the mirror matchup. And uh, yeah, a couple of animate deaths just to recycle the robots as well. Solid brew here. Jacob is uh, not a stranger for these top tables here. Uh, really um, going the entire way in the mountain of madness here into the qu uh, quarterfinals here. As for his opponent, We've seen this deck before in other top 8 matches of other tournaments on this channel and Espen really took the Danish scene by storm uh, with this um, really really personal brew of his. Um, having been in a bunch of top 8s and I think he, he also won a few um, in 2022. Yeah, it is, I mean, it's a shell around um, set straws and you have, but you only have a single Nimrods disc. Then you have a Chaos Orb, you have a... Uh, some transmute artifacts and a lot of one-offs and artifacts in general just to uh, really make those transmute artifacts work so you can uh, get whatever you want uh, for a given situation sometimes it also plays with books we see a single book here where you can get that if you're in a control matchup and uh, obviously you have the guardian beasts as well and then you can transmute an artifact into a chaos orb uh, and then just spin the chaos orb again and again because the guardian beast would make sure that the chaos orb isn't removed so you can just use the chaos orb each round uh, removing permanence and the the guardian beast will uh, make it survive we have some granite gargoyles likely against the uh, aggro just as a uh, defensive measure here a sulk another swamp king as a big fella that can just punch in of a Sheevan Dragon, he can also uh, transmute for a single Icy Manipulator if he needs that. And he also has a single Triskillion that he can transmute into um, if he needs that in a given situation. It can be used to blow up uh, little critters and just to provide additional pressure obviously for the creature attack. Now this deck is uh, partly a disc control variant I guess and as, as is part and parcel for the disc control variant we have a bunch of Mazes of Ith here um, as additional defenses. Usually you'd use those because you don't have soft plowshares to remove big stuff and also when you drop Maces of Ith you kind of force the other guy to drop additional creatures then this guy can transmute for his Nevenol's disc 
blow up all the opposing creatures and regenerate his own trolls. So Mesos of Ith are stable in Disco Trolls and also we see it in Troll Box here. And Mesos of Ith is a nice card against his opponent, the robots here, uh, because he doesn't have many creatures but those he has will be big robots, so Mesos of Ith will be great against them. Jacob will have to use his Icy Manipulators to tap the Mesos down. Uh, that's why I have uh, Icy Manipulators as well in Skynet. Uh, one of the reasons, because uh, it is an out against the Mesos of Ith. And he can also sideboard an Armageddon in uh, to try to get rid of the defenses. But um, yeah, we'll see how the matchup uh, goes. As a slight burn package as well, with three lightning bolts and a sonic blast and a fireball uh, to try to burn the other guy out. And we even have a couple of Shatter's main deck here. Uh, that is a bit unorthodox. We don't see that variant uh, so often with uh, just uh, with Espen's Brew here. But likely because there were a lot of robots here in 2022. So just uh, additional ways to crack those um, automatons uh, if he wants to. And we see in his sideboard here, we actually see a Golgothian Silex. It works a bit like City in a Bottle, uh, but it's only a one-off. You cost four colorless mana to play, and then a single colorless mana to uh, activate, and then it will blow up all cards from the Antiquities uh, expansion, uh, including itself, obviously. It is from Antiquities. So um, the good thing here is that he can use that to, I mean, blow up factories, workshops, as long, uh, along with the Sushis and Triskillians in his opponent here. So I wonder if we, bought, if we will see a Golgodian Silex uh, sideboarded in in this matchup. And obviously with the transmute artifacts, whenever he needs to, well, he just have additional tutors there. We can just get that Golgodian Silex and blow everything up whenever he needs to. Just a, an extra disc, really, an extra Nivellus disc in this deck. Only a single Nivellus disc as set, but with those transmute artifacts, he can uh, dig for that when he wants to. So a rare side indeed in uh, in old school to have so many tutors in one deck, so many one-offs, and um, Guardian Beast Chaos Orb combination making that work on the tournament scene. Great stuff. So a uh, very nice matchup here. Let's get ready to rumble. And we have round number one. Jacob, on, uh, what we can call control bots <laughs> on the left here, uh, on that Mox playmat, and we have Troll Box on the right, on that black and white swampy playmat there. Alright, I don't know who's on the play. Uh, we shall see. Oh, Troll Box Mulligan in here. Alright, cut a bit forward while he shuffles through his deck here. Uh, yep, uh, actually, he mulliganed twice and getting down to five cards, pretty damn brutal. And as soon as he stopped with that, <laughs> and control bot started to mulligan as well. So we'll have to cut a lot here. Both players mulliganing down to five cards, really an odd first round here. Scarce resources on both sides. Uh, gotta make whatever they have work. They can't usually go below five cards but we, we do have a lot of equalizers here we have some draw sevens and um and answers to recalls on both sides uh, to try to get back into it uh, it is a painful experience this when you have to mulligan twice uh, and get rid of uh, two cards here jacob taking his time uh, really trying to figure out what to do. Uh, we'll cut a bit forward um, while he thinks this through. All right, so he shows his hand here. Mox Pearl, a workshop, a, a sushi, a Triskillian, and a soft plowshare. So he can get up turn one sushi and that is brutal with so little resources on both sides, but it is an all in play. If the other guy has a shatter or a soft plowshare or anything, Obviously, he doesn't know what he's against here, but he has a pretty good idea that Ismond will be on Troll Box. So he, he knows there are no softer power shares, but there could be Shadows. Turn 1 Sushi coming out, and he has that white Mox to defend himself with, uh, with a softer power shares. Okay, no answer for the Sushi here. Turn 1, getting in for 4, drawing blood immediately. Oh, and drew into a, a factory. Another mana source. One more mana source for, uh, for Control Bot, and he will get a Triskillian out. Ah, he drew into a Tundra here. Great for him. No Shatter out of uh, Troll Box. Yeah, he could just... I mean, he should probably play the Trisk now, right? Oh, he doesn't choose... Oh, he Time Walks. He drew into a Time Walk instead. 
Alright, so we can attack again with the sushi. And drew into on the planes here, and all set planes. Really got all the mana he needs. That's also usually so um, difficult when you mulligan so much that you might get mana starved. Getting in with the sushi here for another go. After that time walk, and there's a Trisk. Hot damn, that's so much pressure immediately. Do we have a balance or anything here? Nope. Uh, I don't think Trollbox plays with balance, actually. Oh, man, so he can get in for 10 here and then shoot with the Trisk. That's game. <laughs> that's a bit of a non-game this first round here. Uh, both players mulliganing down to five cards. But the kick is up. I mean, Espen knows that he's against robots here. Uh, pretty uh, obvious with the with the workshop and all the all the bots. So a little sideboard here. We see Jacob taking out two ICs, a copy artifact, and a Triskillion. And what he puts in, it's a nice thing that he shows it here. Three blue blasts and a divine offering. So he definitely knows what he's against here. Uh, even though he didn't see any any parts of Espen's deck, he knows they know each other from other uh, tournaments and. He has a pretty good feeling that uh, Espen will be on some uh, red variant with a lot of burn, some trolls, and um, and some one-offs in artifacts. So putting in the Divine Offering and the uh, Blue Blast for that. Ah, uh, heartbreaking. Espen has to mulligan down to six cards. At least he keeps his hand. Oh, we can't really see his hand as he shows it a bit above the camera here. Never mind that. Okay. So... Trollbox will be on the play in this uh, second round of the tournament. Let's hope that they don't have to mulligan into oblivion here. I mean, it is a different game when both players are down to five cards. Whatever you have, it will be so impactful. See the hand here. Okay, he keeps his hand. It's a mind twist, City of Brass, and a Tundra, and a Sushi, yes, at least. Let's get cracking with round number two. Trollbox on the play. Factory go. Now there's a mind twist in the pocket of uh, of control bots here. A mux coming out. Yeah, I was just about to say that he needs some speedy mana to get the mind twist out as quickly as possible. He does have that now. He did ha did have a mux. Can mind twist for two next round. But he didn't see a blue mana out of the other guy, so could be safe just to keep up and make up an even bigger mind twist later on because the other guy isn't uh, approaching a double blue mana for counter magic so it's a bit of a dilemma here do you do your mind twist immediately for two or do you wait for a mind twist for for more and running the risk of the other guy emptying uh, more of his hand getting more stuff out or Maybe playing at draw seven or something, and so you lose your mind twist. Okay, opting for more time. There's the blue mana. Now I think Gobots has to commit with a mind twist. Might have a double blue mana next turn after the next drop out of a troll box, and that will open up for mana drain and counter magic. So, do we see a mind twist for three here? We do have a black mana out of the city of brass. Will he? Press the button here, or be even more greedy. I think the correct play is to play the Mind Twist at this point. It would be the safest bet, but I'm not sure. Yep, okay, playing the Mind Twist. Mind Twist for three. Getting the most bang out of his buck here. Five cards, gets to keep two. Okay, let's see what goes. Volcanic Island, oh, Chaos Orb and a Sonic Blast. Okay, especially the Chaos Orb and the Volcanic Island loss was bad. Oh, but he did have a Maze of Ith. Now attacking the factory while the other guy's tapped out, and he has a maze of ith to block the other guy's factory. So yeah, might as well get the ball rolling here. Brutal punch in by control bots though. Mine's just for three. But I said there are a lot of equalizers here. Troll box could have a wheel of fortune on an ancestor recall and um, get right back into the game. Another mox coming out. Okay, do we have a first attacking creature sushi coming out here. All right. Yeah, losing that volcanic island was brutal, uh, as I said, and also the chaos orb, uh, because uh, it kind of mana starves him. Uh, Trollbox has three mana. 
At least he has a defending factory and a maze of earth, so... I mean, the robots can't really get in either. Oh, but he tries to here. Uh, there's a shatter on the factory. Okay, he wants to get rid of the factory instead of the sushi, and then let the sushi go home. Uh, get lost in the maze. Probably doing that in order to also try to crack lanes and mana starve the opponent here. Copy artifact on the sushi. Well played by robots. He does this in order to make the other guy spend any shatters. Otherwise, when he tries to copy, the other guy will just shatter the sushi, uh, the target, and he, he won't be able to uh, copy it. So drawing out the shatter here and then playing copy artifact afterwards is the correct play. Now it's saying, oh, another shatter here. Okay, kind of insisting on the play now, going for the kill. Uh, getting in with one sushi, the other one gets mazed. Alright, Drawbox needs... Okay, there's another factory. You can see double block and something big here. What do we have? Ooh, I got good in Silex. Talked about that in the deck tech. No transmute for it, but no need. You can just draw it immediately. Oh, there's some trading going on. <coughs> Doing this <laughs> top 8 game. Uh, this is robot player. Got a bunch of uh, rook eggs, I think. That's always the case in these uh, tournaments that they are... They're also pretty loosey goosey, <laughs> so sometimes people just uh, yeah, it, it is a rare opportunity to meet up and, and trade cards as, as as well. We don't have to send them through mail. Anyway, two sushis coming in. One gets lost in the maze. The other touches base, putting Trollbox down to twelve points of life here. Yeah, he can't keep on doing this. He might be forced to. Actually, the Gorgon and Salix, but look, he he has two factories of his own, and he'll lose them. If he, if he activates the Go-Go in Silex. Now a recall for one. A little bit of the soft to plowshares and getting a counter spell. Alright. Alright. There's a Black Lotus on the side there, so he can actually counter now. I don't think he should activate. Yeah, he doesn't activate the Go-Go in Silex. Instead, he can now double block with the, the factories. He might as well. Uh, Double block of sushi with the factories, and then uh, let the other get lost in the maze. He could also single block and then pump it into a 5-5. I think I would double block though, because uh, he can remove one of the factories and get in. Okay, but he chooses another way. He blocks one of the sushis with his factory, and pumps it with the other factories, the 3-3. Three, three and pump itself into a 4-4 and trade. Now it's also plowshowing it. Okay, so it pumps itself into a 4-4 and gains 4 life. And then another sushi gets in. No, it, it, it got blocked, yeah. So he gains 4 life um, in total. Blocked one of the sushis and... Uh, Lost his uh, factory, and that forces him to activate the Gorgon and Silex, blowing everything up because he can't keep the sushis at, back, uh, at bay anymore. So, all in all, losing two factories, but cracking two sushis and gaining four life from that exchange. Being down to four points of mana, uh, four mana sources though, um, troll boxes. We do know that uh, the robots has a counter spell in hand uh, and a black lotus, so he can cast it even if he taps out. Okay, do we have? Yeah, first set troll hitting the table. Now our troll boy is trying to gain some momentum here. Gets soft applied immediately, but I mean, now our troll box is up to uh, almost full health again after that uh, opening sushi exchange. So, draw go face of the game. Both players amassing resources, trying to gear up for another attack. Robots is actually pegging a full hand here. Almost. He needs to play something soon or he'll have to discard.
giving it a good think though. Okay, discarding something. Can't see what it is. It doesn't draw enough land, uh, land or mana sources. And uh, Trollbox seems to draw a lot of mana sources instead. A bit of a stare down here. Seems like Trollbox is trying to get something going here. Transmuting. Likely the Black Mox into something. Maybe a Trisk. Trisk would be dangerous because the other guy has copy artifacts. What will you take? An Icy maybe? You, you can tap the other guy's City of Brass. Okay, mana draining the transmute artifact though. Okay, so it was a bait trying to uh, get the other guy to counter the transmute artifact. Now he has a demonic tutor. Do we have another? We know there's a Black Lotus and a counter spell uh, on the hand of uh, robots, but will he sack his last resources to stop that tutor? I mean, most likely Trollbox will go for the library, right? If he goes for Ancestor Recall, the other guy will just crack the Lotus and counter that. I do believe we saw him recall a counter spell earlier. Does Trollbox remember this? I mean, the library at this situation where there's such a stalemate would be good. Oh, he goes to the Ancestral. Do we have a counter spell here? I do believe that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I think there was a misplay. I think uh, Trollbox should have gone for the library here and just save up for that because you can't counter that. Now he has lost both the tutor and the, and the incest recall and he knew that the other guy had a counter spell. But at least, I mean, at least the counter spell is gone now. There comes the Trisk. What will robots do, uh, Trollbox do now? Fireballing the Trisk. Okay, it just shoots him for good measure. Yeah, he, he, he needs to get rid of the Trisk immediately before the copy artifacts start to uh, come out. It is very dangerous to have a, an unanswered Trisk for too long against robots. Because he just starts to mass produce them. There's a library though. Okay, now he needs to save up for that if he can. Don't know how many cards... He, okay, he starts to here. I think that should have been the two to target, as said. But then you can just draw it, so... <laughs> That's good. Ooh, Trisk. Okay. I said he kind of needs to answer that. Uh, does have a Maze of Ith to keep it back, but it is risky because yeah, he can't answer it here. Maybe he can, maybe he can't, but he's saving up for the library. Uh, debatable. I think he should go for the library as well, but it is dangerous to have a, a Trisk out here. I might see some copy artifacts soon. Control box really just speed running into library range just to pull ahead here. Yeah, that's the first copy artifact. Do we have a Shatter here? Ah, oh, cheeky, Red Blast. Oh, but there's a counter on the Red Blast. So we have another Trisk. This is dangerous. Attacking with the Trisk, it gets lost in the maze. Okay, so now he needs to commit another. Yeah, search troll just to block a Trisk. He has to do this. Uh, it will keep him out of library range again, but um, needs to get the defenses up here. Oh, but there's a soft plasher on the on the troll here. Getting another three points of life. Triskillians comes lumbering in, swinging for eight, but one gets lost in the maze, the other uh, gets in, draws blood. Putting troll buff down to 14 points of life. And remember, the Trisk can shoot for six at this point. So if he gets within range of that, Oh god, okay, got a rocking factory. He needs to play that again. Can't get in within library range here. Doesn't have the time. It's too late in the game. So getting in for four again. Choosing not to block with the factory. A bit risky again. But maybe he, he hopes for another factory so he can double block it. Maybe he has one in hand. So he can trade instead. What's well, the big stuff coming out of robots here? Another Trisk. So he can shoot for nine. Okay, that actually means next turn is curtain call for Trollbox, unless he gets something out uh, to block one of them, because they can shoot for nine after attacking. And one will get in. Need another Maze of Ith or something. And a Swamp. That keeps that in handy. He, okay, he looks over his graveyard. Do we have a recall or something? Yeah, okay, it is a recall. Yeah, 
would be great for the balance in this situation just to clear the board of the robots but I mean no matter what you do you're gonna take nine points of damage from them okay robots wants to check what is what's in his graveyard um, it, does, it is a recall for two cards oh and then choosing just to counter the recall straight out no nonsense here okay this is brutal robots are ready attacking for 9 uh, 12 here blocking one of the sushi uh, Triskelions the other gets in this chance is Triskelion uh, sushi before block gets in for 8 and then uh, shoots with all guns robots take the second round so robots will advance through the tournament into the semi-finals here and we also saw we saw the previous sky stick advance into the semi-finals as well okay we're gonna see the sideboard options here two red blasts two shadows a good in silex and a sonic blast getting in on the side of troll box here a lot of answers and as it we also saw what robots took in he took in the four blue blasts a uh, three blue blasts and a divine offering it makes perfect sense on both sides actually Sonic Blasts are great against the robots because they also have 4 in toughness. Getting rid of the Lightning Bolts, they're not that great in this matchup. Getting rid of a Felder Stone as well and a book. The book is a bit surprising uh, in a control matchup like this, but uh, I mean, he knows his deck best. I think otherwise all the, uh, yeah, all the decisions made perfect sense here. So we are now finished with the quarterfinals there's a 2 to nil victories on both quarterfinals going into the semi-finals here and we'll be sure to follow up with more matches from this tournament as soon as possible thank you for watching and i'll see you in the top four